thank you, Lynn, for that lovely prelude. This is the day our Lord has made. Let us worship him now in joy and gladness. This is a special day in the life of our worship community here at Ripley Presbyterian Church. As we will celebrate the infant baptism of little Ossie, she looks I can't wait for y'all to see her this morning. We're grateful to have few family members here with us and many family members and friends of the faith joining us online today. Our service will still be in minutes. Nobody's going to want to go back to real church, are they? They like these abbreviated services. So we'll have a short reflection on today's scriptures, and then we will celebrate this gift of God's love and life for Ossie with her parents, Patrick and Julie. So happy to have you all here today. I want to share an opening prayer. Then we'll have a scripture reading. I'll give a brief meditation, and we'll celebrate the sacrament of baptism. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this gift called worship, where we set apart a holy day that we call Sabbath. A day of restoration and renewal. A time that we pause in the busyness and, let's be honest, quite craziness of our world at times to pause and consider your goodness, your grace, and thank you for your abounding love. Will you, O oh Lord, receive our worship as we celebrate your glory? day in holy sanctuary or in our sacred sanctuary even in our home this day will you make yourself known to us through the gift of your holy spirit and as you receive our worship our prayers of thanksgiving our songs of praise that you would also oh god mold us and make us a little more in your image that we may be light in our world through your love and for your glory. In Christ we pray. Amen. Our scripture today is from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. We're going to begin our reading in verse 9 of chapter 12. This is following that passage of scripture where Paul says at the beginning of chapter 12, Do not be conformed any longer to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. So let us today consider how Paul expands that call for us as the church to renew ourselves more in the image of Christ. Listen with me for the word of the Lord. Let love... Be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in the spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. But associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. 
For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome evil. Excuse me. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we reflect on this radical love that Paul is calling us to this day, these challenges to do things that, quite honestly, we don't want to do, to respond to those who respond to us, not in a light manner, but in a loving manner. As I consider this great challenge of Paul today, and He's laying out a model, perhaps a mission statement for the church in Rome. It helps us to remember in strategic planning, those who have been schooled in such thought, they tell us that for an organization, for a church, for a dental or a physician's practice or a school teacher in their classroom, we all need a goal. We need missions of where we are or more importantly, who we are. And that seems to be at the essence of what Paul is saying today. He begins his mission for the church in Rome, and maybe we would even say for the larger church, with this goal, this is who we are. He says, who we are in our faith, we should be peaceable with one another. He uses these words specifically as he lays out these goals. He Love should be genuine, and we should be mutually affectionate to one another. Now, what does that mean? He's saying we don't have to fake it. We want it to be real. If we're going to embody Christ in our world, then Jennifer's love for me and my love for her has to be genuine. And we have to have affection for each other. So Paul makes it clear to us, it seems, in this mission. For the church in Rome that this is who we are as people of Christ. We are those who have genuine love and affection for one another. But Paul doesn't just leave it with a goal. Anyone that's good at strategic planning says it's one thing to have a goal, but then how do we measure our success? How do we know if we're accomplishing those goals? Paul gives us these words here. Listen to this. After he says to us that our goals are to live in harmony, to have mutual affection, to have genuine love, and he says as well as it depends on us, we should live peaceably with one another. That's who we are. So how do we measure that? Wow, here's the tough part, y'all. Paul says this is what it looks like when we're being who we are. He says we outdo each other in showing honor. We rejoice in hope. We're patient in suffering. We contribute to the needs of the saints and we extend hospitality even to strangers. We bless those who, oh, it's really getting hard now. We bless those who persecute us. We're not haughty. If our enemies are hungry, we feed them. If they're thirsty, we give them something to drink. And then finally, he says, we don't overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, those are the things that we do to be who we are as people of Christ. That's what Paul is saying. I don't know about y'all, but Paul, I've got a question. I do it. You've told me in this text who we should be, those who are genuinely loving for those around us. And you told us how do we measure that success, what we're called to do as we hear. But my question is, Doc, how do we do it? In other words, in words of a good strategic plan, Paul, tell us your strategy. How do we do it? Paul would maybe say, I'm glad you asked. Because here, friends, this is where Paul simplifies our faith and takes us back to the roots of what our faith is built upon. Paul says here, do not lag in zeal 
or passion for the Spirit. He's saying, trust in a power greater than yours to embody the nature of Christ. In other words, you can't do it yourself. You need a strength from on high. If you want to live love that's genuine, if you want to have affection for those from whom you disagree and at times you don't even like, how do you love the unlovable? Trust God. Trust in the Spirit. And he also tells us how to trust the Spirit. He says this, friends. Hold on to this. Take it with you from this sanctuary, from this day of worship. Paul says, persevere in prayer. Persevere in prayer. That's our surrender of saying, God, I need more of you and less of me. God, I, I don't have the answers. Will you strengthen me to be a reflection of you in this world in need of light and love? You know, I remember story once of a husband and wife that were having significant marriage problems. And finally she was ready to throw in the towel. She'd given up and she see her attorney and he said, you know, if you really want to make him pay, if you really want to get to him, I want you to go home don't tell him anything about your plans, and I want you to treat him like the king of Mississippi for like the next month. Cook all his favorite foods, buy you some pretty outfits, be fixed up, clean up, do all this stuff, butter him up, and then when he's getting feeling real good, just cut his legs out from under him and drop him like a ton of bricks. So that's what she did. She went home, and she treated him like the king king of Tennessee, not just the king of Mississippi. She fixed all his favorite food. She was beautiful and kind and, and just welcoming and loving. And a few months passed and the attorney forgot about it and he called her up. He said, what happened? I haven't heard from you. Did you, did you try my plan? She said, oh yes, it worked like a charm. She said, I went home. I started being nice, more patient, more kind, cooking him all his favorite food. Treat him like the king of Tennessee. And he said, that's wonderful. How did he like it? He said, she said, he loved it. He said, well, great. Well, come on down. Now's the time to cut him loose and hurt him to the bone. She said, are you crazy? We have never been happier. See what happened. When she gave to him outside of herself, it became contagious. And he gave it right back. Now I know human relationships and marriage isn't that simple. But there seems to be a call to our faith that's central to that story that we hear in our text today. When we practice, dear friends, radical love, it becomes contagious. You want to know what the hope for our world is? The hope to conquer hate is not more hate. The hope to conquer anger is not more anger. The hope for our world is the love found in the Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. So I've answered some questions with Paul's help today about our faith. The who of our faith, not the what of our faith, the how of our faith. But ultimately, the most important reason we respond in love is the why of our faith. We love because he first loved us and claimed us as his own. In spite of our brokenness and shortcomings, delivered us from our sins forever and gave us life through the gift of grace. Amen.
becomes the star of this show. <laughs> Hear these words of Scripture. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, said our Lord. So go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peter wrote this. You are a royal priesthood. Today she will see set apart as part of the heavenly receiving the promise that God has claimed her with his love even before she has any concept of God. Now certainly, Ossie will have her own opportunity to profess and formally claim as her own as she grows up in the church with the love of her parents. But you see, what we celebrate today is that the work of her life and salvation is already completed. That God has done his part. That God's love is already there for her to claim it and receive it as her own through Christ Jesus like giving love. So we celebrate this gift called baptism today where the water reminds all of us that our sins have been washed away. That we have life just as water provides life for us. We have life through God's love. So I ask you today, Patrick and Julie, do you yeah. standing before you today, along with Julie and Patrick, is one of the elders of our church session to present them for baptism, but also he has the more important role of being granddad. So, Doc, I ask you on behalf of our church session to ask these questions of our congregation and of the family assembled here today. Thank you. On behalf of the session of River Presbyterian Church, we'd like to welcome everyone who's joining us today. Uh, and for those that are here today, uh, to Kenny and Lynn beautifully, for Jennifer Huddleston that does everything. I see little Vivi Ward back there with, <laughs> with, her, with her mom, Anna. And we're joined by the grandparents. We're joined by Matt, Dr. And, and Mrs. Addison, Mac and Claudia, really known as Poppy and Lottie. <laughs> and by Michael and his wife, Emily, and Julie's niece, Millie and Ossie's favorite first cousin, uh, Millie, and by Grandma Lynn, also known as G. And I'm going to read this question, and please, those here and those of you joining us, please answer in the affirmative. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Ossie by word and deed, with love and prayer? encouraging her to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of his church. Do you? We yeah. do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And now that we've answered our questions, I also ask the parents today to reaffirm their faith in Christ, the faith in which they are awesome. Julie and Patrick, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn in every way you can from the ways of sin and renounce its powers in our world? Do you? We do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ, accepting him, reaffirming your faith in him as your Savior, trusting in his grace and love to nurture her in your life? Do you? We do. And will you be Christ's faithful disciples in every way you can, following in his word and showing his love? Do we? We will. At this time, we're going to give thanks. The gifts of water, the gifts of baptism, and the gifts of family. We have local water, and we have Jordan, great-grandmother. 
the great great grandmother of Ossie in the Jordan River. We celebrate. Oh God, we give you thanks for the gift, the symbolism of water that reminds us in you we are washed from all of our sins. In you we have newness of life and life that will never end. We thank you that just as you led the people Israel through the waters, you delivered them from the bondage of slavery. You separate us from all things that bring about our destruction. You utilize the waters of the Jordan to pour forth your spirit on our Savior to proclaim in him is life, love, and joy for all who trust in him as Savior. So come, O Holy Spirit, this day. Pour forth your grace upon this family as we begin our life's journey, nurturing this beautiful gift in your grace and love forever. In Christ we pray. Amen. Hey, I hope this is enjoyable. Hey, man, I'm going to let you look at Mama. That always helps. Little Ossie Addison. It's my great honor and high pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, may you pour forth your grace on this child this day and forevermore that she may remember through the stories of her parents and her loved ones that you claimed her through your love long before she could claim you. Pour forth your spirit this day and forever in her life. In Christ we pray. Amen. Friends and family, let me introduce you to little Ossie. She's part of us as family and church to nurture her in her faith, to love her mom and daddy when she's unlovable, and to never let her forget that she's been claimed by God forever. His love will pursue her until she claims it as her own, and he'll never let her go. This is Ossie. Let's continue to pray for her throughout her life's journey. And now, as we prepare to end our worship, come on down with me, family, mom and daddy, and I want to offer y'all one final blessing. She's liking me. I may just take her home with me today. She's liking me pretty good. And now, friends and family, I'm going to spend a final blessing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God who is our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Max.